talk about the mobility project for youth workers. Mm. Uh, first, we uh, we will talk about the objectives uh, of the action. Uh, we support uh, the project comprising of one or more learning activities for the professional development, of course, of youth workers and their organization, organizations. And uh, it's the same as the previous uh, Erasmus. on uh, EU strategy and uh, to be more specific uh, is based on European work, youth work agenda. Uh, I advise you to see this document. Uh, it, uh, uh, the document is listed in the um, program guide uh, 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 below this, uh, this action, the describe, describe of this action. So, uh, by the mobility project for youth workers, we want for our, our applicants to provide non-formal and informal learning opportunities uh, for educational um, and professional development of youth workers, uh, contributing to, of course, high quality, quality individual practice, uh, as well as uh, to the evolution of work organization and the system. So uh, this is the same as previous Erasmus. Um, in addition, we want to, to, to our beneficiaries uh, build a community of youth workers that can support the quality of the project. So we want the project to be more and more specific and, uh, and, and that, and activities for young people in EU programs and beyond. And of course, we want to develop uh, uh, local youth work practices and uh, contribute to capacity building for quality youth work of the participants and the organizations, uh, having a clear Im impact of the participating youth workers, regular work with young people. So all these things are the same. Mm. And uh, the list of the professional de development activities, PDAs, uh, are also the same as previous Erasmus. Uh, we have uh, listed activities such as study visits and different types of assignments. For example, job shadowing, youth work exchanges, and peer learning uh, in youth work organizations and organizations active in the youth of fight abroad. Uh, the next activity is networking and community building, of course, among youth workers taking part in the action and supporting its ob objectives. Uh, the third uh, one is training, uh, our training courses, uh, supporting the development of competences to implement quality youth work practices or, or address and test innovative method, methods. And of course, uh, we have uh, here seminars and uh, <clears throat> seminars and uh, workshops. Uh, they are supporting um, knowledge building uh, and best practices sharing linked to the objectives, by values and priorities of the EU, EU youth strategy of the EU programs contributing to its implementation. Uh, so as you can see, it's the same as previous, uh, previous Erasmus. Uh, not eligible activities are also the same, so it, it can't be a festival, holiday travel, perf performance tour, or statutory meetings because it's, it's an activity which, which you do in your organization. We, we want to support the EU values, not statutory meetings of organizations. Uh, we have something new uh, in uh, act activities in the project so you can add to your project complementary activities such as system development and outreach activities and preparatory visits. First, we start with uh, system development and outreach activities. Um, uh, this is for uh, more experienced uh, beneficiaries, you know, in, in the, in the program guide, there are not active, the, the, the activities 
uh, are not listed, yeah? They are not listed activities uh, linked to system development and outreach activities. Um, it's something for more experienced uh, beneficiaries who want to um, further, uh, to do further dissemination. Uh, so uh, these activities uh, focus on activities aiming at enhancing the impact of the mobility project of the uh, field of youth. Uh, these activities include uh, all activities contributing to the European Youth Work Agenda. So, uh, so, so look at this document uh, for quality, innovation, and recognition of youth work, and bring back lessons learned and tools to the organization involved in the project and beyond. Uh, these activities represent an opportunity for more experienced, as I said before, and resourceful beneficiaries to test innovative methods and responses to shared challenge, challenges. Uh, beyond these activities, we can product the tools and share the practices contributing to the development and evolution of youth workers, organizations, and systems, outreach, and community building activities in the introduction to innovative methods, including the use of digital technologies through youth work. So this is uh, digital technologies is uh, it's an objective. It's a really, really, really <clears throat> important objective of the new program. So it appears uh, of uh, it, it, it appears to that uh, here in the complementary activities. Uh, the second complementary activity is uh, you can add to your project preparative visits. Uh, preparative visits uh, can be used for, um, for, for get each other if you have a new partner in your a new partner. So you, you, can, you can do this. You can get to know each other by, by using preparative visits in your uh, in your project cycle. Um, preparative visits aim, uh, aim uh, is to ensure high quality activities by facilitating and preparing administrative arrangements, building trust and understanding and setting up a solid partnership between the organization and people involved. Uh, of course, preparatory visits take place in the country of one of the receiving organization before the start of the main activities planned in your projects. Uh, this is the, I think, the most uh, important thing, what the project must include. Uh, you should think about it when you are setting up your project. And as you can see, um, we, have a, we have here um, learning process, learning process. Uh, in our projects, uh, in your project, you have to um, plan the activities to support the reflection process of the uh, participant and activities to in, in, indi indicate and uh, document uh, document our learning process outcomes. Yeah, uh, it's. Um, uh, beneficiary used, uh, of course, you pass and it's uh, and it's good. Uh, but uh, think about another activities and another methods to 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 support reflection process and uh, and the outcomes. So so remember about this thing. Another thing is, uh, of course, inclusion and diversity. Uh, it's like uh, previous Erasmus. Uh, we we focus on um, we focus on uh, on people who had uh, uh, lower opportunities uh, and had lower access to um, access to to the projects uh, because of the um, because of the economic maybe or or distance or or living in the in the place which is um, located uh, far away from the from the organizations yes yeah, something like, something like this and um, of course uh, Erasmus plus uh, promote equal opportunities and access so so remember to include uh, people with lower opportunities to your project 
so 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 uh, it's 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 really important for learning process and to take uh, uh, okay mm, so, so this is this is it you can uh, inclusion and diversity of course there are uh, people accompanying and the, the the people who are who have a lower opportunity yeah so so this is um, uh, you should be flexible uh, of course, the the thing is really important is uh, protection and uh, safety of participants uh, when you are planning and prepare prepare the project. Uh, take take care about the issue of protection and safety. Um, you should uh, should prevent uh, things, yeah, and uh, provide. Uh, necessary measures and and uh, prevent uh, reduce risk you must you must first see it in, in the project so so remember about it uh, another important thing of course is uh, which is related to the objectives of the new program we must focus on environmental sustainability um, the pro your product should promote uh, environmentally sustainable and responsible behavior among, among participants. You should, uh, by means of the activities in the project, you should raise the awareness about the importance of acting to reduce or compensate for the environmental footprint of mobility activities. Uh, it should be designed and implemented with the environmental consciousness. Uh, so, so um, focus on that too is really important. Of course, another objective and really important thing is digital transition. Um, uh, we want to support uh, participating or the you know, organization in incorporating the use of digital tools and learning methods to complement their physical activities to improve the cooperation between partner organizations and to improve the quality of the activities. So digital transition, maybe, maybe if you uh, don't want to uh, have a preparatory, preparatory visit uh, in real life, yeah, you, you, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can do this by 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 the means of digital tools, yeah, on Zoom as we are see each other right now. Uh, of course. So another, the last thing is uh, is Erasmus Youth Quality Standards. Uh, Jakub Reyniak who was talking about it. So so look at this document and and use it. Uh, all right. So. It was uh, what projects must include. Remember that, and when you will write your application form, please uh, list all of these things in your application form. Uh, another thing is uh, is the same as uh, eligible participating organizations. So we have a nonprofit organization, association, AGOs, European youth NGOs, a public body at local regional, national level, a social enterprise, a profit-making body active in corporate social responsibility, and of course, a group of your people active in youth work, but not necessarily in the context of youth organization. Um, in the program, you, you, have, uh, you have explanation about the um, group of young people. Uh, of course, the organization must be established in a program country. Uh, it's obvious and a partner country neighboring the uh, European Un Union. <clears throat> All right. And so let's see what's next. And other criteria are also the same number of participating organizations, of course, minimum two, minimum two participating organizations, at least one sending and at least one receiving organization from different countries. Uh, this organization must be involved in the project. Uh, duration, three to 24 months, uh, duration of activities, two to 60 days, excluding travel days, minimum two days must be consecutive. Uh, participants, no age limit, 
up to 50 participants. Okay, we have some new things here, funding rules. We, as you can see, we have seven budget categories. Organizational support, uh, it's, uh, it's the same, but there are something you think, uh, travel, travel based on distance calculator, uh, but we have some new things here also. We have standard travel and green travel. I will, I will show you uh, it later, a little bit later. Uh, we have something new, individual support. This is, is a new category. Inclusion support. It's, it's, it's all also something, something new. We have prepar preparatory visit support. Um, Six, system development and outreach activities. It's, 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 it is what I was talking about. Uh, it's for organization with higher experience. And we have exceptional costs. So let's go on with it. Uh, organization support uh, costs directly linked to the implementation of mobility activities. And, and uh, I think it's, 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 it's obvious. Uh, the financing mechanism, contribution to unit costs, um, rule of allocation, um, based on the number of participants, of course, excluding accompanying persons, trainers, and facilitators. This is a new thing. The support for uh, trainers, uh, accompanying persons will be in the Another budget category, uh, it will be in the individual support. So remember, uh, exclude accompanying person, trainers, and facilitators. It's uh, 100 euros per participant in a professional development activity. And next category is uh, travel. Travel, uh, of course, contribution to the travel cost of participants, including accompanying persons and uh, facilitators from their place of origin to the venue of the activity and return, of course. Uh, rule of allocation is, of course, based off of the travel distance and number of persons. You can uh, use the, you should use distance calculators supported by European Commission. Um, it's the same, it's based on travel distance. Uh, it depends uh, what, what, what is the distance, so you, you have some some euros uh, to this uh, action. Um, the applicant must, uh, oh, okay, so, so I, I was talking about it. Uh, so you can see, oh, okay, so we have uh, differences uh, in this. We have standard travel and green travel. So, so of course, try to, to use the means of uh, tr transport. Of course, uh, people, green travel, we, we recommend it to to think about it. Um, so this is a travel, all, all of the things, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, is uh, in the program guide, of course. And so, so please check this out for further, further and more specific uh, information. Um, Another another thing is another category budget is individual support. Uh, costs linked to subsistence. Uh, contribution to unit cost and the rule of allocation. It's based on the duration of the stay per participant, including, including accompanying person, trainer, and facilitators, if it's necessary including also one travel day before the activity and one travel day following the activity. Uh, of course, it depends on the distance, but uh, you know, if you have 10 kilometers so uh, to the venue of uh, projects, if you have 10 kilometers, so, so, so you know, one travel day, it, it, it's not needed. Yeah, so, so remember this. Um, if you have uh, green travel, you can add to your project uh, four additional days, uh, two days before uh, before the main activity and two days after the main activity. 
So, so I think it's a, it's a good thing for our applicants. Mm, all right. Uh, we have something new, like something new. Well, it's, it's maybe it's new. Inclusion, uh, inclusion support, uh, cost uh, related to the organization of mobility activities for participants with fewer opportunities. Uh, it's a 100 euro per, per participant, uh, so you can, you must sh uh, show us uh, in the application form the number of uh, participants with the fewer opportunities, uh, excluding, of course, accompanying persons, trainers, and facilitators. Uh, inclusion support is also a cost directly linked to the participants with fewer opportunities, uh, of course, and their accompanying pairs. So this is also an uh, inclusion support, the inclusion support. Uh, um, inclusion just justified costs related to the travel and subsistence uh, if a grant for this participant is not requested through budget categories, travel and individual support. So remember, they are not, we, we, we can uh, use double funding here. So, so remember about it. Uh, so so um, you can uh, put in here everything you need to, 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 to support your participants with, uh, with lower opportunities. Um, um, it can be based on, I don't know, physical, it's, it's something you, uh, you, 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 you must think about it. Um, okay, next, we have preparatory visit support. Uh, cost linked to the implementation of the preparatory visits, including travel and subsistence. So, 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 it's the same uh, as in, in, Youth exchanges, uh, financing mechanism is based on contribution to unit costs, uh, the rule of allocation, excluding participants from the receiving organization. So uh, if you are receiving organization, probably we assume that, that you don't need an accommodation. Uh, so it's only for, uh, for, for partners organization. Uh, and it's important, uh, maximum one, uh, one participant per participant organization can be founded per activity. Um, in program game, they, they, they write, uh, write there, there is no limit for facilitators taking part in the main activity. And there is a conditional, uh, the need for a preparatory visit objectives and participant must be justified by the applicant. So you must show that this, it's necessary uh, and describe it. And it, of course, it must, must be approved by the national against. So an expert assumed that the preparatory visit support is not needed in the project. It will not be needed. <laughs> so it's, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, this is it. And and, and another category, budget, budget category, is system development and outreach activities. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, is for a beneficiary who has wide ex a wide experience and want to um, show show their their tools or or um, who wants to disseminate the projects, the results and outcomes of uh, the project. Uh, in here, we have costs linked to the implementation of the complementary activities. So, so as I said, either complementary activities is system development and activities and preparatory visit support. And this is, uh, this is, uh, these are indirect costs. Uh, so, for example, uh, um, for example, if you need to um, to do some uh, another follow up workshop to disseminate your project results, you probably 
um, should have a um, space to do it. Yeah, so you must rent uh, rent uh, space. Uh, you must pay for electricity or something like this. Uh, the mechanism of the financing uh, is based on real costs, so you need to have your invoices. So keep uh, keep them. Uh, the rule of allocation. Uh, of course, the need and objectives must be justified by the applicant and approved by the national agency. Um, and it's uh, important that maximum 10% uh, of the total project cost can be allocated to these uh, specific uh, activities. Uh, and the last category of the um, budget is our exceptional costs uh, for providing a financial guarantee if the national agency, agency asks for it. So uh, you can predict this cost in your uh, uh, in your in your in your application form, uh, it is really useful because I think it's really useful. So, uh, especially if your if your grant is uh, if you have uh, few granted grants uh, and uh, please think about it. Uh, what uh, what are the costs in this category? Uh, also, visa and visa related costs, uh, resident permits, uh, vaccinations, medical certifications, um, expensive travel costs of participants, including group leaders, accompanying persons of, and facilitators, uh, including the use of cleaner, lower carbon emission means of transport. So, um, the list of exceptional costs looks like this. Uh, financing mechanism, real costs, and the rule of allocation. Of course, requests must be justified by the applicant and approved by the national agents. Thank you for the information. So I'd like to ask about advanced plan visits, like uh, two questions. First of all, there is written that uh, the advanced plan visit should take place in the country of receiving organization. And as far as I know, the receiving organization is the host organization. For instance, if youth mobility is taking place in Georgia, receiving organization is Georgia. So does it mean that if, for instance, other partner countries are like Germany and things like this, the advanced plan visit should take place, like spe especially in Georgia and not in any place else? So I kind of misunderstood that part. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, these visits should take place where the training slash workshop or seminar will take place. It's the same country. If the activity is going to take place in Georgia, the preparatory visit will be in Georgia. And that's all. Okay. One preparatory visit, one activity. If there are two activities, there can be two prep visits. Okay, thank you. And the same question, like you have mentioned also, that it can take place like digitally. And uh, my question is, like, in case it takes place in person, like physically, as I remember, in case of youth exchanges, there was like fixed cost per participant, which was like roughly 500 euros. It's but, the same. Uh, yeah, but what we, if we decide to make it like online? So what happens then? Because I don't need to travel mm -hmm. anymore, no more accommodation. I just need to buy, for instance, like Zoom account for one month or something. Like All this. right. So, uh, uh, so far, where we worked, the, we didn't have prep visits in youth, exchange, youth work exchanges. Mm, so, uh, but all activities uh, within this action were, uh, had the budgets reduced and we only um, uh, funded 35% of all organizational costs and no travel grant, of course. Uh, since uh, this will be in the new program, we don't have the and the model contracts yet, so we don't really know what the percentage would be, but I would really aim at 30% of what's available, uh, because that would be the cost of perhaps renting or some equipment or paying for services like Zoom Pro, but also in all cases, if, it's, if it happens that prep visit may not take place, and uh, we uh, will have to um, reduce the cost of the project by re removing that category from the budget, and that would mean that you could pay for Zoom Pro or any kind of uh, um, 
premium uh, membership of any uh, service from the project money. Because uh, organization support can cover everything related to the project, including a subscription of Zoom uh, or any kind of canvas or any kind of platform that might be needed. So if it happens that the prep visit may not take place uh, on site, uh, the costs uh, related to organization it, uh, of it online can be paid from the project project budget. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I have a question as well connected with the preparatory meeting. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation and uh, many of my questions were answered during it. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, because it was mentioned that uh, for the preparatory meeting, we don't um, ask money for the host organization, like participants yes. of the host organization. But what if in case the organization is situated in one city and the activity will take place in another city or... Sadly, it's not possible. It's not possible. Uh, there were no exceptions to the rule. But, uh, representative of... Uh, representative actually one person, a representative of a hosting organization will not be covered through funding for, for prep visit. We don't have exceptions to the rule. So it's only for incoming people from abroad. Yeah, thank you. And one more question connected with the individual support. Um, mm -hmm. In the program guide, uh, we have the limits, yes? Uh, money uh, for each country and for example yes. for the neighboring partner countries we have uh, 48 euros per day per participant and mm -hmm. in the program card it is mentioned um, uh, another amount of money maximum to 1100 euro per participant i a little bit misunderstood what it means um, well it's of, uh, because it's limited by the number of days of that day. a uh, activity may um, last uh, in in the case of uh, individual support this is the the old organization support money that mm -hmm. was already there so uh this is calculated based on the number of days so uh, in in reality uh, it's uh, it's the number of days for activity plus two days for travel uh, multiplied by this amount and the amount is only applicable if the activity takes part in the given country so it's if it's in let's say in Armenia or uh, or uh, Ukraine or in, uh, elsewhere in partner countries, it's multiplied by the, the amount that you have given. Uh, and uh, also there is this um, separate category organization support. It's only for participants, uh, and it's this is this is the um, the reaction to the increasing costs of organizing uh, activities uh, um, in partner program countries. We didn't really in increase the lump sum. It's still the same as it was seven years ago, but we added this new category of 100 euro per participant. That would be it. So it's calculated more mathematically uh, and it's the, the rule of assignment is rather simple. Thank you very much. We have two more minutes. Last question. It's last moment. So I th just a comment, maybe uh, Alexandra already uh, underlined it in her presentation, but it's very important to uh, to remember that uh, all uh, participants, uh, all organizations from both partner program countries have the same rights and obligations in all projects. So we have the same budgeting rules for all participants, regardless of the country of origin. And that's, that's very important to underline. Also, if there are trainers and facilitators that are covered through individual support, they, you will receive a portion of the budget for their accommodation, food, what have you, and well planned for them. But they are not covered through organizational support. So uh, your organization, if you are hosting some, something in Georgia, Armenia, or Ukraine, or and outside the, the EU, uh, then um, these uh, trainers and facilitators will be covered through individual support. That's, that's good. But they won't be covered through organization support. So this organization support, this new category, it's only for participants, not for trainers. So that would be... Uh, that needs to be underlined. And uh, also, I mean, there's, there is a difference right now when it comes to, you have seen it perhaps in the program guide, 
that uh, when it comes to travel, um, travel grant, uh, there is no zero uh, grant for travel. Uh, even the minimum uh, distance between um, a venue and a sending city uh, is to be covered through the grant because we had very many situations that there were some, uh, let's say, difficulties. Uh, as as uh, this is exactly what uh, Mariam uh, brought up. If someone is from a different city, but the city is very close and there, were no grant, there was no grant beforehand, now it's covered. So these categories are, are very useful, as well as this inclusion support category, which resembles well what was already available in previous um, edition of the program, but it, it has just a different name, plus this extra 100 euro per participants that faces some additional, perhaps unforeseen, previously difficulties. And this is not only about, uh, as Alexandra said, not only about health issues, but also about geographical uh, difficulties or learning difficulties, or maybe cultural uh, difficulties. Maybe someone was located or is located in a very remote area, uh, and has never been, uh, has never left the, the village and needs some coaching. So from that money, you can hire a coach that will help them to leave and make that step outside that little uh, comfort zone that they have lived in. Uh, 